Okay, so this is part two of ions, ionic bonding and covalent bonding. This video is going to cover uh, the section on covalent bonding. Okay, so let's go over here. And the example that I'm going to give for covalent bonding is the formation of a water molecule. Okay, okay so here we have on the periodic table, we have hydrogen. Hydrogen is on the left hand side of the periodic table. Remember I told you that atoms on the left hand side are metals? Well, hydrogen is actually an exception. Although hydrogen is on the left hand side, hydrogen is actually a non-metal. So I'm going to write this here. This is a non-metal. The only reason hydrogen is on the left hand side is because hydrogen's atomic number is 1 and in order to kind of go along with the other elements they placed it there but hydrogen technically should be at the right hand side of the table oxygen is on the right hand side of the periodic table so for a fact oxygen is a non-metal okay so what happens when we have two non-metals well when we have two non-metals being paired we have a covalent bond okay covalent bonding occurs between two non-metals and what's going to happen is that they're going to share the electrons okay so let's go right ahead into the picture and see what's happening I drew an oxygen atom here um, a uh, oxygen has a total of eight electrons so in the first shell the first shell can only have two electrons and in the second shell uh, the second shell can only have a total of eight electrons but um, because oxygen has a total of eight electrons in all, then I could only uh, draw one, two, three, four, five, six. So I could only draw six electrons in the outer shell and two electrons in the inner shell to make a total of eight electrons. Okay, the number six here, where it says six A, the number six means that oxygen has a total of six valence electrons okay so one two three four five six oxygen has six valence electrons or six electrons in its valence shell or outermost shell okay hydrogen on the other hand uh, remember that the first shell can only hold a total of two electrons but hydrogen only has one electron in its outer shell I know this because of this number up here this number 1a tells you that you can only have one electron in its outer shell and because hydrogen only has one proton it can only have one electron and oxygen because it has a total of eight protons it can have a total of uh, eight electrons <clears throat> to be neutral okay so uh, let's see what happens here. Um, this shell, the first shell, can only have two electrons. So the question is, is it easier for hydrogen to just get rid of this electron or to um, gain that missing uh, electron? Well, it's actually both. So there's really no competition there. And for hydrogen, uh, I'm sorry, for oxygen, oxygen needs two remaining electrons so what's gonna happen is because you have a, a non-metal and a non-metal two non-metals are gonna share the electrons so what's gonna happen is that this electron that hydrogen has is going to uh, be shared over here with oxygen okay so that's gonna be shared but there's still a problem oxygen still needs one more electron to have a total of eight in its outer shell so what you're gonna need is another hydrogen atom okay and this other hydrogen atom is going to share its electron with oxygen so now everyone's happy now this hydrogen has a total of two this oxygen has a total of eight electrons in its outer shell and this hydrogen has a total of two electrons in its outer shell because they're sharing them they're sharing the electrons okay so here we have a covalent bond okay so what's gonna happen is it's gonna look like this a 
Okay, so here's the oxygen. Let me draw the electrons. Oxygen now has a total of eight electrons in its uh, outer shell. So it's, uh, oxygen is happy. But remember that oxygen is sharing electrons with hydrogen. So we're going to have a hydrogen over here. Okay, and remember that hydrogen has two electrons, this one over here and the one that it's sharing. So now hydrogen is also happy, but we need another hydrogen over here. Okay, so I'm going to draw another hydrogen. Okay, so this is the electron that hydrogen is sharing with oxygen, and this is the other one that it had. So here, we have a, uh, an oxygen atom bonded to two hydrogen atoms, and this is what we call a water molecule. Okay, so water uh, forms a covalent bond between one oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms. Now, uh, you don't have to draw these pictures to figure out how many atoms go with the other atom in this uh, covalent bond or in or in ionic bonding because I'm going to show you now an easier way to do this without having to draw a picture. Okay, and this is how you do it. Okay, so oxygen has, let's go up here, oxygen has a total of six electrons in its outer shell. So you need to ask yourself how many more electrons does oxygen need to have a total of eight? Well, hi, um, sorry, oxygen needs a total of two more electrons to have a total of eight, okay? So I'm gonna put here two more electrons to have a total of eight, and I'm gonna put this negative because uh, oxygen is a non-metal, and typically non-metals like to gain electrons. That's why I'm putting uh, that negative symbol there. Now hydrogen, what, what's going on with hydrogen? Well hydrogen, uh, let's go up here, hydrogen has one electron in its outer shell so in order to be happy you need to have a total of two electrons in that first outer shell. So the charge for hydrogen, uh, I'm going to put a one up here. Okay, uh, this, remember th uh, this is not, th these are not uh, ions, okay, because in order for you to have an ion, you need to have a metal and a non metal. But the only reason I'm doing this is uh, to avoid the picture. Okay, so what's going to happen is if you want to figure out how many hydrogens per oxygen, this number, this two, is actually, you're going to flip it. You're going to put it down here and you're going to put this one over here. So this is what's going to look like. H, this two, is going to go down here. And this one is going to go down here, so I'm not even going to write it. And that's how we have H2O. I'm going to give more examples uh, when it comes to ionic bonding so you can see exactly what I mean. This is a little confusing, so if you don't, uh, if you don't understand this yet, don't worry about it. Just understand the concept that covalent bonding is the sharing of electrons, and covalent bonding only happens between non-metals. Okay, and for now, just uh, if you don't know what I just did, just focus on the picture. Just draw the picture, and connect the electrons to the the missing region. And in the the next videos, I will be doing these types of examples where you don't need to draw a picture anymore. You can just draw the atoms. Uh, you can draw the, the charges and you're going to see you're going to form the formula without having to draw a picture. Now, one more time, uh, the, these are uh, covalent bondings don't really have charges, but I'm kind of drawing, I'm pretending that it does have a charge so that I can write this formula. So watch my other videos and I'm going to provide more examples.